Hello everybody, today's shoe showcase is showing off a pair of Bostonian wingtip Oxfords that I thrifted for $15. These things are in really amazing condition, made in the USA. Uh, it's not really a before and after because they're already in phenomenal shape, so I'm also going to compare and contrast them to the Allen Edmonds McAllister. We're going to see what the Bostonian's 80s qualities was compared to today's Allen Edmonds. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordon. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Okay, so I've actually already done a video on thrifting Bostonians, and you'll have a link here as well as in the description below. Um, the main point of the video, I guess, uh, uh, and I'm gonna reiterate here, is that the vintage Bostonians are actually a really phenomenal shoe. Um, but they're not very collectible. So they're not a good shoe to buy to resell because like on eBay and things like that, people generally look things up. So they go for certain brands like Floorshine, you know, um, but the Bostonians just seem to have been overlooked, weren't as popular, didn't sell as much. Um, so all I've literally done to these shoes since I picked them up is I just stuck a shoe tree in them. That's it overnight, okay? You can see the logo there. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I have here first. Bostonian Impressions. Uh, the, these are corrective green leather, which I'll talk more about. Uh, but if you look, this is a 270 degree Goodyear welted. I'll try and show you here. You can see the outsole stitching, okay? And you can see where the welt kind of tapers off there. So it is 270 degree Goodyear, Goodyear welted. Look at that stitch density. Okay, for example, uh, a pair of Allen Edmonds that were made in, uh, what year were these Allen Edmonds made? I think these Allen Edmonds were like 2017, uh, something like that. Um, but let's compare stitch density, you see? Quite a bit higher on the Bostonians. It's really nice, high stitch density. Um, and then also the way you know it's made in the USA is just because you can see right there under the logo, it says made in USA. Uh, the leather density I think is pretty good. The reason I'm saying that is I'm looking at the amount of wear, you know, kind of on the heels there, right? And then how much or little the sole has actually worn out, right? Feels like nice, dense leather, single oak. And we've got a beautiful uh, wingtip design here. Okay, let me turn the camera around and I'll get in in a little more detail. So let me give you some of my impressions of the Bostonian impressions uh, versus the Allen Edmonds. Um, on the Brannock, I measure uh, 11 and a half uh, in foot length, width, uh, right foot about a double E, left foot about an E. Generally speaking, now this is an Allen Edmonds McAllister, same last as the Park Avenue, uh, the Fifth Avenue, and um, you know, this is one of their narrower lasts. So an Allen Edmonds 65 last, I'm 11 and a half triple E, fits like a glove. But again, this last runs a little narrow, um, you know, so it kind of sizes like an Allen Edmonds 65 last 11 and a half triple E would fit like 11 and a half double E, is kind of my impression. These, if you can see, where uh, the size. So the Bostonians are, if you can see there, they are a uh, 12 triple E. So the EEE, -E -E, that is, if I can get it to focus, the triple E is the ball width and the E is the heel width. So usually if you see that, you know, the two sets of letters like that, you know, the Allen Edmonds here only list just the ball width. So the normal is two widths down. So if you have a, uh, you know, triple E down two widths would be an E. So what I see is compared to the Allen Edmonds, um, I don't know if you could tell, the heel cup is actually pretty generous. I'm trying to put these in the same focal plane. The Bostonian on the right, the heel cup is wider. Still, the heel still fits okay because I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, this is probably a good way to tell. It's wider. I mean, like quite a bit wider through the heel. This is kind of unscientific, but it is wider through the heel, but it does taper up so my heel doesn't slide around in it, but it's got a fairly big heel. Um, and then if I line the shoes up, if I, if I line the heels up, and then I look at how wide they are, they, they're pretty close. I mean, it's hard to tell exactly where you have different shapes, but one thing that surprises me is even though the Bostonian is a 12, the Allen Edmonds 11 and a half is actually a longer shoe. Do you see that? But again, 65 last is their longest last, I think they say, or one of the longest lasts. Um, and it's surprisingly, the 12 triple E on the Bostonian is not that wide. 
You know, it, a 12 triple E in the Allen Edmonds 65 last is just too big. That's too much room, you know, around the vamp and stuff like that. I mean, you can wear them, but it's not ideal. Um, the Bostonian also, um, I don't know if you could tell. Let me go to the same shoe. I would say with the Bostonian, the center of the toe is more towards, the center of the toe um, is more towards the uh, inside of the shoe. With the 65 last, the center of the toe is, you know, more centered on the last, if that makes sense. So what I noticed on these is my wider right foot, every time I have a fitment problem on a shoe, it's always here. It's going to be wearable, um, but my outside of my pinky toe, see how this kind of cuts in harder, I guess I would say, than on the Allen Edmonds. I don't know if you can tell that. Um, my toe does kind of brush up against the front of the shoe. So um, uh, um, there's quite a bit of room I noticed on the instep. The, my uh, lace is fully closed when I lace these up. So uh, for whatever that's worth, and I can't tell you what last this is because there's literally like zero information. I can't even find old Bostonian catalogs other than the 1962 Bostonian catalog on vcalate.com. I looked for several hours. I, I could not find any information on them. I don't know exactly when these were made. Let's look at one other thing is the leather quality. Uh, the leather is, it's not bad. It's a little stiffer. Uh, this is corrected grain leather. Um, I will link another video here in the video as well as in the description below to go in depth. But corrected grain leather, sometimes you'll hear it called book binder leather. Corrected grain leather is a, usually starts with a lower grade of leather where maybe the finish isn't as good. The surface of the leather is ground down and then it's coated. So if you can see, do you see how uniform the color is? Also watch how it creases. This isn't bad for corrected grain, right? This is a higher quality corrected grain. What I've noticed is Bostonians, Florsheim, uh, I think Florsheim has used it, yes. Um, but Bostonian and especially Allen Edmonds, uh, 1980s um, and earlier, if it's made in the USA, the corrected grain leather is actually pretty high quality. Now compare and contrast this, granted there is a patina. Can you see the difference in depth of color? This is kind of monotone. Granted, it's also darker. And then do you see the Allen Edmonds, the full grain leather? So this was not coated, okay? You can see the actual pores. Do you see that? This is the actual skin of the animal. And do you see how it returns very nicely? It creases better. It generally lasts longer. But I'm telling you, uh, you know, even though most of the shoes that I've ever owned, if the corrected grain leather, if the shoe is made outside of the U.S., it's generally pretty low quality. This stuff is pretty good quality. Okay. I've shown you this test multiple times, but here's another reason. You may want corrected grain leather, okay? Do you see I'm putting just a drop of water? And I'm going to talk while, you know, while this water sits there. So one of the advantages to corrected grain leather, though it is coated, it has a plastic coating on top of it. So if you're not going to take care of your shoes, this might actually be better. If you live in an area like I do in Northeast Ohio, where we have salt, uh, you know, snow, the snow and ice comes down, and they salt the streets and the sidewalks to melt, accelerate melting of that ice and snow. Then you get the salt water and you could literally expose your uh, full grain leather shoes to that salty mix, salt water mix once and it'll bubble like it's a metal, piece of metal rusting and you can really damage a leather even after one exposure. Where what you'll see with uh, the corrected grain leather, it's much more impervious. It's not totally impervious, but much more impervious to stuff like that. Um, you'll sometimes see, I don't have an example on this shoe, but you'll sometimes see though, if this coating, sometimes it, when it's not done as well, it wears and you'll see a light color underneath and you can't really dye it. This stuff doesn't take polish very well. It doesn't take moisturizer very well, um, you know, but they're not, it's not a bad shoe. Okay. And I'm going to leave that on there while I talk about some other things. So first thing we'll look at uh, the medallion is actually surprisingly similar. If you see between these two, right, it's got that very similar shape. Uh, the whole pattern, it's surprisingly similar, you know? Um, they're almost identical. See the similar broguing pattern here with the holes? You see uh, one large, two small. That's pretty standard for a brogued shoe. And you see here, though, in the Allen Edmonds, you see this double row of stitching, capturing, single row of stitching, capturing the broguing. You see there's pinking, the sawtooth, this one has no pinking. Look how nicely it's skived. You see how that leather, there's like, you know, not much of a bumper transition, right? 
And same thing here, one row stitching capturing the broguing here, as opposed to two with pinking. Little style differences, right? The Allen Edmonds, this is a separate piece of leather, do you see here, right, with pinking? And here with the Bostonian, this is just stitching, so there's not two pieces of leather there, okay? See how nicely the two pieces come down? A little bit different shape, do you see that? This comes down um, a little more gradually, okay? They both have a nice heel cup with a similar design there. The Bostonian, though, it's kind of interesting, uh, uh, has one piece of leather and the stitching only goes halfway up the back. You see, it's kind of like pulled apart there, though. You see him kind of stretching it over the last. Do you see, because of the 270 degree Goodyear welting, do you see how the, the heel of the Bostonian, you see how it fits tighter? See, because you have this 360 degree Goodyear welting, do you see how the heel sticks out? That's the advantage of 270, where you can get the heel cup to fit tighter. You can also see that in the width. Little style differences, not a major difference. Okay. Now let's go back to this water that's been on there, okay? If I wipe that water off, you really see almost no evidence of it soaking in, see it kind of beads on top. Or here, you see that? The water has soaked in. So that's because of that lack of a plastic coating. The water does soak in much more rapidly on a full grain leather shoe than a corrected grain shoe. So especially if lighter color, full grain leather shoes, you gotta be very careful, like dripping anything greasy on them can, you know, be, you know, really difficult, if not impossible to get out, you know, like barbecues or you're cooking in the kitchen or something like that. So with a corrected grain is gonna be much more impervious, but. So if I turn them over, we already looked at kind of the stitch density. Uh, what's interesting though about the Bostonian, Allen Edmonds comes standard with a solid rubber heel. I created this heel myself, so they generally come with a solid rubber heel. Look at that, it comes with a very nice leather rubber combo heel. It's dovetailed with 15 nails around the perimeter. I mean, that's something you only generally see on the high end shoes, you know, that are costing, you know, three, four hundred dollars and up, you know, to get that kind of stuff. Um, it looks like a fiber board. It does not, I don't think it's, uh, it could be. I can't tell what kind of heel construction. No, this might actually be layered leather. This shoe's got to be made before 1980. I couldn't imagine Bostonian was still doing this in the 90s. This has got to be made in the 80s. I wish I could get more information on it. But I know the Allen Edmonds heels are always like a fiber board, and it's like a ground up leather. It's like the plywood, you know, similar construction as plywood, but it's made of uh, ground up leather, I believe. Okay. Nice logo. Okay. Um, and you're always gonna generally see if it's 270 degree good, you're welted, they nail from the inside of the shoe to hold the heel on. They're always gonna have like this half, you know, liner, okay? And it's got some padding in it. I don't necessarily like the padding. Um, I don't believe shoes should have a lot of foamy, squishy padding. It feels nice on your foot when you first put them in, but what if, you know, you, what if you're trying to walk on sand? You know, that squishing, I, I, I don't believe it helps in long-term, you know, comfort or, you know, I, I think it creates more energy when you're walking. I really don't like it as much, but, and there is some, I can feel some foam padding here in the front. So I don't think it's a, I don't know what the insole material is, but I don't think it's solid leather, it feels squishy. Where the Allen Edmonds, let me take this out. You've got a nice, thick, solid leather insole. And it's hard enough not to have that squish, uh, but it does conform to the shape of your foot over time. Uh, you know, so this is a little bit more comfortable in my books. And granted, these aren't broken in yet. Like I said, the leather does feel a bit stiffer. There's a big heel counter, solid heel counter in this thing. I mean, this has a heel counter as well, but it's not as stiff. It feels like it's got a little more ability to conform to your foot. And the leather is more soft and supple. And like I said, this leather feels a little stiffer, especially, you know, through the front. But so, um, you know, so like I said, pretty impressive quality for their, you know, impression, I don't think was like their high end. You know, they had Windsor and Crown Windsor, you know, but if this was the kind of normal shoe they were making, you know, in the 1980s and uh, prior, it's pretty impressive. And like I said, it's a, it's a good shoe if you find them at the thrift store, you know. Um, like I said, you're not going to get anything reselling them, but hey, you know. Can't tell me that doesn't look nice. The heel really, the more I'm looking at them though, that heel proportion is kind of odd. 
you see how it gives the shoe, you know, this is a triple E width and it gives it a big chunky appearance from front to back, you know? Right, you see versus the Allen Edmonds where it does widen. That is kind of odd the more I'm looking at it. The impressions, I don't know why that, I don't know who has a heel that big. Maybe I can put them this way if you can see. I'm trying to get them in the same focal plane. That's a substantial heel, you know. But they are pretty comfortable. I've worn them around the house here a little bit. So um, I'm going to get these things cleaned up and mirror shine them. I mean, like I said, they're, you know, don't need much. I'm either going to have to replace the laces. One of the aglets came off, so I don't know if I can fix that or replace it. So let's get started. By the way, in regards to the Allen Edmonds McAllister versus the Bostonians here, I really wish I had. I did a video about four years ago. I'll link it here uh, in the video as well as in the description. I compared the Allen Edmonds McAllister to the Allen Edmonds Chester. I don't have the Chesters anymore, but the Chester... Um, and this was like a 2000s to uh, early 2010s model. You can see it is the darker shoe. Uh, it is corrected grain as well. Um, it does have pinking, you can see here, around the edge of the wing and, you know, all the different separate panels. Um, there are some minor differences here as we uh, zoom in on the toe cap. You can see there's pinking at the edge of the toe cap. Two rows of stitching, broguing then one row. Uh, there's a little better look at it here. And uh, But much like the Bostonian, that panel here on the eye stay is one piece of leather with just cosmetic stitching. It's not actually two pieces of leather. And the same thing on the heel counter here, that whole quarter is one piece of leather. Uh, that is stitching, broguing, broguing stitching. That's not two pieces of leather, so. And again, you get a better shot here of the corrected grain leather. Now I just popped the laces out and this is, yes, it looks dirty, but you know, doesn't matter. It's got dye on it, but this is just a damp, not sopping wet, but this is just a damp cloth, you know, and you can see some like water spots and things, but especially with the corrected grain shoes. Um, I'm not gonna saddle soap them. I don't use saddle soap so much anymore. I'm just gonna wipe them down. You know, this is plastic coating. Everything pretty much just comes off. Like I said, if you, they're not bad if you're not gonna take care of your shoes, you're just gonna ruin, you know, expensive pair of shoes. The trouble is most of the corrected grain leather you get nowadays is just garbage. I'll show you what it does. This kind of stuff is what happens to most of the corrected grain leather. See, this is bonded soles. Um, you can see it's cracking, right? You see that? The leather just splits apart and cracks. You know, these are made overseas. So that's usually what you happen. Um, here's another pair of shoes that I featured recently in a video, right? Bostonian Classics. By the way, if you're looking for shoes like this, check out The Brogue Exchange, thebrogueexchange.com, um, selling site where you can list and sell or buy shoes, uh, similar to eBay. It's got some additional features. I'll link that video if you want to under learn about the uh, Brogue Exchange and Brady, who uh, started the site. But, you know, anyway, you see what I'm saying? Not bad. So it's just, just wiped off. See, I'm trying to find any spots that have some staining or water spots on them. Don't worry, they'll get nourished and polished. See those spots? You just kind of wipe them off. And, you know. Cleaner cloth. You could just, you know, wear them like that if you wanted, you know? So. Um, I am going to use my favorite conditioner on them next. And if I can find it, here we go. Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner. Uh, made in the USA. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about this, I'll link a description in the video. Uh, I'll link in the description of the video. Yeah, you know what I mean. Orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. All natural ingredients. 
Uh, really good stuff. I really like the way this absorbs. I do prefer this um, over the Saphir, um, my taste personally, over the Saphir Renovateur. If you want to know why, again, see that uh, video interview with the owner, uh, Andy. I like the way this seems to absorb better, deeper into the product or into the leather, just my opinion. And I also like his science behind why he uses ingredients he uses in this. So let's take some on your finger. I usually try to start with the left shoe. I always like to start with a vamp. I'm going to put very little on. Now, I have a kid's birthday party here today. Um, and so this is an ideal time to do this. I generally don't load up the... I'll go a little bit on the toe cap, but I generally don't load up the toe cap uh, because I don't want it greasy when I do a mirror shine. I'm going to put a little, little, little bit up there. I'm going to drive it in with my finger under the welt if I can, as much as I can like that you see that we really drive it in there and into these creases here because this is where shoes always seem to crack the first is here and here you know where the leather flexes said so with this corrected grain leather around the eyelets here too but corrected grain leather does not really absorb into the leather very well you know so i'm not going to use much of it because it's just going to sit on top of the leather but the reason i mentioned the birthday party this is a good time to do this uh, because with this stuff, the, the directions actually do say, uh, if you can see right there, uh, apply uh, with fingers, you know, blah, 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 one circle, uh, air dry one to two hours. I have found that is really important. Um, otherwise, you're gonna try to like shine the shoe up or something like that, it'll feel greasy. You really do need to give this stuff that time to settle in, to soak into the leather. And if you do, it's, you know, like I said, it's worth it. Um, but I really like the way this stuff feels and you know, the way it makes the leather feel. Okay, so I'm just going to let that set up. I'm going to give it like an hour. Okay, it's been uh, an hour. With these have been sitting, setting up. Uh, it's not going to be a huge difference, you know, uh, um, being corrected green. So look at that, huh? High speed, moderate pressure. Okay, I'm gonna try something here. I got the shoelaces. This one end is missing the aglet. So I'm gonna try this. This is heat shrink tubing. I don't know that it's gonna shrink down enough. But I sure as heck I'm gonna try. I don't know. I'll see how I think about this. 
But if I polish that up, you won't notice. Okay, I actually put a little bit of wax on it. <laughs> Brushed it off. Eh, it's passable. Oh, I'll leave it. Now, my experience is that oftentimes, or maybe I should say most of the times, a mirror shine on corrected grain is really difficult. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the wax doesn't quite want to build up. Um, but I found it usually to be extremely difficult, extremely time consuming. So uh, we're going to see what happens here. not always the case, but many times.
question that I pulled um, to, uh, um, as far as dating these shoes, by the way. So how old are these shoes? Some of you guys that know my channel and have seen some of my other videos, I go way down the rabbit hole sometimes, you know, after the kids go to bed or whatever, 10, 11 o'clock at night, I will just dig and look things up and see what I can figure out. The Bostonians, there is like close to nothing on the internet about the old Bostonians. All I have to go by um, are examples that have sold on eBay and, you know, maybe on Etsy or things like that. But those generally don't have any definitive dates on them. Uh, so here are a few things that I have been able to figure out. For example, with Alan Edmonds on ISSUU.com, you can actually find um, not quite every year, but almost all of the annual catalogs going back to like the 1950s. So it's not as difficult with Alan Edmonds to, uh, you know, figure out what year they are, because like I said, you have that uh, to reference and as well as other people have figured out uh, the date code system um, that a lot of the Alan Edmonds had. Um, so, but back to the Bostonians. I have some information here from David. David Kreinheider is the gentleman that runs vcleat.com. There's not very many people that I would say whatever he says is accurate, but he's you know pretty close to that in my status. Uh, vcleat.com is the Bible of all things vintage shoes. So according to David at vcleat.com, here are some logos. He says this one is from the 1960s. Now notice it says famous Bostonian Challengers. I don't know if Challengers is a, just a model line, but look at it says Bostonian. If you go to this next logo, he says this is from the early 70s. Notice it says Bostonians, plural with an S on the end, and it's all capital letters. He says this one is from the mid 70s. And if you look at this one, uh, you see that odd exclamation point, and it's back to Bostonian, singular. And you now see made in the USA, which I thought was unusual for a shoe that old. I don't think any of the other shoe manufacturers started putting made in the USA until later, like into the 80s or 90s. Uh, and then you see here, this logo I have seen quite a bit. He says this one is the 80s logo, uh, Bostonian. Notice the tail of the ends drop down below the line. Uh, you see the made in USA. I believe the impression is a midline shoe. Uh, during this time, I believe the Windsor or Crown Windsor, like if you see any Shell Cordovan Bostonians from the 80s, um, they would be uh, Crown Windsor. So I think Windsor slash Crown Windsor, you know, made to compete with the uh, Florsheim's uh, Royal, Imperial, and Imperial line were their top line. I think this is a midline impression. And they also had a Classics line. So here's what I believe happened. Uh, in 1978, according to vcleat.com, uh, Bostonians was purchased by Clark Shoes. So then Clark's started making all the Bostonian shoes uh, in 1978 in the Hanover factory. Uh, let me show you some evidence for that. That is kind of interesting. Here's another example of a pair of made in USA Bostonians. The logo is getting kind of worn off. I'll show you a picture of these when they were new, but it does say right there made in USA. Uh, it has that Bostonian logo with a B on top of it. Um, and this also has a kind of a funky star logo. I've seen them do before and just plain, uh, you know, rubber heels that they came with. But they are Goodyear welted, okay? And they are made in the USA. Here are a couple examples of the Bostonian classics. There were Bostonian classics made in the USA, um, but then uh, later all the classics that I've ever found made in the uh, late, eight, late 90s um, and the 2000s, up through I believe the early 2010s, generally are made in India and or China. You may recognize this beautiful new old stock shoe uh, that's featured in a video. I will link in the description below. But this is a Sears, Sears Roebuck shoe. Look at that stitch density, right? It's unbelievable. Uh, but anyway, um, you see this stitching pattern? This is a Hanover made shoe, okay? Um, uh, I, I'm 99% sure of that. This is a Hanover made shoe, shoe. Look at the comfort arch, if you see that. The way the insole has kind of like a V shape to the front of it. Okay, this is a Hanover produced shoe. And then if I show you an example of a Bostonian here, here's an example of a Bostonian from the same era made at Hanover. Look at that same comfort arch, uh, the same font and that same uh, insole. Uh, so, you know, it's basically common knowledge here uh, that the uh, Bostonians uh, from 1978 through 1996 were made at the Hanover factory. Uh, Hanover factory uh, closed and they stopped producing shoes in the United States in 1996. Therefore, I think it's a safe assumption that if you have any made in USA Bostonians, that they were made 1996 or earlier. And here they are all finished up. I did something different than I normally would. I actually wore them out for a day. I usually wouldn't do that. 
for the finishing shot, you know, for fear of scratching, scuffing the shoe. But in this case, I wanted to be able to report to you how they fit. See the nourishment? It's not like crazy, but I think it's nice. Right? Um, so as far as how they feel, the leather does feel stiffer than like the Allen Edmonds and, and most of my other shoes. It feels a little stiff. I mean, it kind of surprises me because the shoes have been worn enough where I can't say it's because they're, you know, it's like new leather. And the other odd thing, um, you see the shoe tree in there? I said this before, but how big that heel is, like look how much space there is around the heel of the shoe tree. Um, I put it another way, side by side. This is the Allen Edmonds, McAllister, 11 and a half, Triple E. You see the difference in that? So what winds up happening is the heel, my heel does not pop out uh, because it's hard to tell here, but this heel, you know, it's got some taper to it, like a cup shape. This one just has a lot more. So what winds up happening is there's space around the sides of my heel here, and this part does grab the, the upper part of the heel, so it doesn't pop out, but this digs into my heels, uh, the sides of my heels a little bit right here. You know, this, this, this area right here, uh, digs into my heel, and it's not terribly comfortable. This is definitely, uh, uh, these are definitely not going to be what I call a 10,000 step shoe. And they look pretty. You know, they're a gorgeous looking shoe. So I'll probably wear these on days where there's inclement winter, weather, rain, snow, stuff like that. Um, and I'm not going to be walking a lot, but where I just don't want to, you know, expose these to the bad weather. I don't know, just something different, you know? To have, like I said, would I go and spend 150, 200 bucks to have these? No, absolutely not, especially with the way they fit. And that may help. Um, what I can do is I could put a pair of uh, like a, uh, a leather insoles. Um, here, I'll show you. Actually, do this with the McAllister. McAllister, see this? This is a leather insole I got from Amazon. And then do you see how I skived it down? Thinned it down there so it tapers off. So it just lifts the heel a little bit. I did this years ago in the McAllister's. Uh, because one of the shoes over here, I think this height is higher than most of my other shoes. It just rubbed my ankle bone a little bit, and that little bit of padding raised the heel up. So I think something like this may also help these shoes. I may try those padded insoles in these and see if that helps the comfort. But yeah, like I said, you know, I wouldn't pay uh, uh, you know a couple hundred bucks to have these shoes, but for 15 bucks, sure, why not? With inflation anymore, you know, I can't feed myself a McDonald's for less than about nine to 12 bucks. They do look pretty though, don't they? And when you shine up the soles a little bit, you know, the arch area makes it look nice. I'm really surprised by these heels. Hello everybody, today's shoe showcase is showing off a pair of Bostonian uh, what the crap are these? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. Thank you.